Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve invert binary tree leak code number 226. So we are given the root of a binary tree and we want to invert the tree and also return that tree's root. Okay, so what inverting is, it's basically the process of turning it from the left tree into the right tree. So as you can see, the root's the same, that's always gonna be true. But then what's on the left here is a two, but in the inverted tree, it's actually what's on the right is a two. And again, over here on the left, what's on the right is a seven, but over here in the new one, it's the left is the seven. So basically you have the left and the right arm are going to swap. For this two here, we'll notice that over here it's left is one, but over here it's right is one, and over here it's right is three, and over here it's left is three, okay? So it's basically for every single node that you have here, you swap its left and right arms. Okay, and they have an even simpler example right here. If you have just two and then one and three, it's just two and three and one. And the third example shows we're actually allowed to have zero nodes in the tree. And if you have zero nodes in the tree, it doesn't actually mean an empty list here. That's just a way to represent that the tree is null. And so you would also return null in that case. Okay, so if we were given this root here, we'd be given this node. It has a left and a right. Now, the first thing you'd want to check is, is this actually a node? As in, if it's null, then you don't really want to do anything with it because you can't access its left and right arms if it is null. So firstly, you'd say if it's null, then just return like you don't really want to do anything with this. Make sure that it's a valid node first. And now that it is, now that we know it's a valid node, well, then we always want to swap the left and the right arms. If you were writing this in Python, it's actually really easy. You just want to do a swap. So we do root.left and root.right. That is equal to root.right and root.left. Change the root.left to be root.right and change the root right to be root.left. So it effectively just does this, where if this is its left arm and this is its right arm, well, it basically just says, okay, well, I'm going to make my right arm point to this, and I'm going to make my left arm point to this. Now that's kind of confusing because it has it like kind of moving around there. So more visually, it would actually do this, where these are going to stay exactly as they are, but they are going to move positions here. The root will now point its right to be over here, and the left will point it to be over here. And then you just want to do this recursively. So this guy has got to swap his left and his right. And this guy has also got to swap his left and his right. And you'd want to do that basically all the way down the tree for all the valid nodes. Okay, so then what you would do is just call this function recursively. You'd say, just call the function again, where the root is going to be the root left and the root is going to be the root right. And so when you did that, when it got to this bad boy right here, root.left, he'd say, okay, I'm going to do the exact same thing here where he is now root. And so so it's going to swap these things. That's going to put this over here on the right and it's left is just going to be none and that's perfectly fine. And then after that, we'd kind of do this in this depth first search manner where we know we still have to do it on this one at some point, but it's going to be written in a DFS where this guy is actually going to be visited next. And actually technically you'd probably visit this left node over here, which is none, uh, but that's immediately going to return back because he's not really going to do anything since it's not a node. Okay, so we would hit this one here. He swaps his left and his right, but they're both none, so that doesn't really do anything. He'd return back to this. This would return back to that. And then we would actually call it on this two here. Okay, so on this two, he would actually swap his left and right. So he would do this, and this is going to be none. That's fine. He would call it on his none, and that doesn't really do anything. That would just return back to here. Then we'd call it on this valid node. He would swap his arms, but that doesn't really do anything. He'd return back to here. He'd return back to here. And then what you would do is actually we want to make this recursive function return the root at the very end here. Because if you do that, then that actually satisfies the constraint of the problem, which is returning the new tree. If you recursively make this return the root, well then this guy, when you called it on him, he's going to return the root. Okay, so we're going to make this function itself recursive and we actually don't need any helper functions. So what we're gonna do here is say, if not root, so this is our base case saying, if this root isn't actually a root, so if you called it on none or basically null here, well then we just want to return none. And that's what root itself is. If this ever executes here and we're in here, then the root is none. And that's why this is gonna really help for this case here, where if we initially had root as none, well then this is going to return none immediately and that actually solves that problem there. 
Okay, so if we're past this point, that means we are a valid node. And if we are a valid node, well, then we want to do our swap here. So we'd set root.left and root.right to equal root.right and root.left. That just does the swapping of the arms. And then we just need to do this recursively. So if we did it for root, we swapped its arms. We just need to go down and do it for both its left and right. So then we actually need to do self here because it's in a class. It's kind of irritating, just a silly Python thing. So we do self.invert tree on the root dot left and we would also do self dot invert tree on the root dot right so we do it on the left we do it on the right then he's going to do the same thing all the way down and then at this point we are done inverting the entire tree and so we can actually return the original root because that is what the question wants here is to return the new binary trees root okay so the time complexity of this well this is basically a depth first search and for each node that we see in the depth first search we're going to do this simple swap and so we do a constant thing for each and every node in the tree. So that is going to be a big O of n operation for sure. Now, n is the number of nodes in the tree. And so we do, we see every node in the tree. Okay, and the space complexity is a little interesting. We're doing a depth first search. And so that basically does, like you can picture a straight arrow down. We are going all the way left here. And while we're going all the way left, well, that keeps a call stack open for all of these different nodes here. So he'd be open, he'd be open, he'd be open. We're keeping a call stack open because it's recursive going all the way down to the bottom. So the space complexity is actually O of H, where H is the height of the tree, because we are storing space in the call stacks. So we're storing call stack for all of these nodes going down here. Or if you wanted, you could also write that as O of N, because technically the height could be as high as the number of nodes in the tree. If you pictured a tree where it's literally just like a diagonal down, say, for example, all the way on the right, well, then the height is the number of nodes. So they're the same. But I like to write this as O of H. I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.